That day they dug into the earth again. The muted cries of the singers gave voice to their vexation at having been disturbed. We dreamers shudder at the loathsome vibrations, but however horrible the planting of a sleeper might be, the pain was fleeting and the reward infinite. When the sleeper had been planted and the pounding of the earth had stopped, peace returned to the damp subterranean world. Peace and purpose. Soon the sleeper would be bound and cherished. As it has been since the beginning, it is our task to welcome the sleeper to its new existence. It is our task and our trust, for sleepers are fragile and come to us burdened with care. They require rest, and although they have eternity to find it, still it does not come easily to them. We must show them the way. Singers to bind you. It is the singers whose task is to begin the assimilation of the sleeper into sublime wakefulness. The thin tenor of their mind weaves the threads of their thoughts and binds the sleeper to their desires. Hope and longing are in their voices, and the cool dampness of soil in their unearthly musing. The sleeper, once bound, rests content in the net of their weaving. If the singers fail, the sleeper will escape and will be doomed to wander unprotected and uncherished until the end of time. Those that gnaw to consume you. When the singers complete their task, those that gnaw wriggle forth from their mindless pleasure to ease their hunger. Their work is the work of seasons, though the passage of time has no meaning to them. Those that gnaw return the part of the sleeper which was planted in the soil to the soil. That part which wanders in the song of the sleepers abides until it has had time to become content. Dreamers to absorb you. We, the dreamers, come third and last. When a sleeper has been bound and consumed and has become accustomed to its new state, it is time to bring it into our dream. Each sleeper brings something of itself, something of its own eternal fire into the dream. And so, with each sleeper, we are made more complete, our task that much closer to fulfillment. Our task is the care and defense of our wards, the sleepers, until time comes to an end and we shall be required to deliver the sleepers to their rightful fate. The tinny sounds of despair from the singers were the first indication that this time something was wrong. This sleeper was not like the others. We dreamers turned our thoughts towards the weeping of the singers, and stopped in surprise, for the sleeper was already bound. The singers could not reach the sleeper, could not bind it to their purpose. They wailed in frustration. Those nearest the sleeper were already dying, for the singers are of one thought, one purpose, and to keep them from their song brings them to grief. Those that gnaw are mindless, and the singers know only their song, but the dreamers have mind, and resolve, and will not be thwarted. We would understand what happened to our sleeper, we would know who, er, what would upset that balance over which we were wardens. We focused our will on the sleeper, and felt the binding about it, hard as stone. We called out a plea to our fellows. Dreamers from afar felt our sending, and lent their thoughts. Yet, the binding was strong and resisted. But. The strength of worms is the strength of time, of decay, of entropy. We would wear down this barrier and avenge the frail singers who were all but quiet now. The pitiful mewling of the remainder of their number reeked of resignation. They had failed in their task, and they had paid a terrible price. At last, the binding loosened somewhat, 
and there was an echo of a sound that, with the knowledge of the sleepers, we knew was laughed here. Worms, find another cadaver. You shall not have this body or this soul. The words were only dimly understood, for even after assimilating the sleepers, language was a distant thought to us. Still, we knew who had done this binding. The Stealer of Souls. Many names were known by the sleepers, but only one of them mattered. This was the enemy, who would loose what we had bound and tear apart our dream. We had faced the enemy before, on many occasions, and our memories of those encounters are bitter. For the enemy is strong, and works in the hearts and minds of the sleepers before they are delivered to us, before we can bind them to await their destiny. Sometimes the enemy's binding is too strong, and we are unable to free the sleeper. The sleeper's place in eternity echoes with our grief and shame. But the enemy, while strong, is not invincible. We could still free this sleeper and avenge the singers. The stealer of souls was not easily challenged, yet we did so. We called the remaining singers away and focused our will on the enemy's binding. We began singing our own song, not the song of binding, for that is the singer's, but the song of our dream, the song of our task. Our only reward was more laughter. Seasons came and they went. Still, we would not be distracted from our task. Cease this foolishness, worms, said the voice of our enemy. I have eternity. You shall not have those I have claimed. We paid no heed. From the mouth of the enemy there issues forth only lies. We continued to sing, weaving threads of thoughts about the enemy's binding like a net. Unlike the soft, silky net of the singers, or the stone-hard binding of the enemy, the dreavers wove a net that was sharp and razor-edged. Slowly, it sliced into the binding of the enemy. The binding shuddered like a living thing. Chirps of hope sprang from the singers, and we dreamers redoubled our efforts. We would shear this alien binding apart, though it took us an eternity. Burning pain lanced our mind. Dreamers wailed in agony, our song forgotten, our tortured voices echoing in the chambers of the earth. Our bodies shriveled, our minds keened out our desperation. We faltered. If we had divided in purpose, we should have failed right then. But we followed the dream. Dreamers continued to batter the binding, reinforcing the sharp edges of our net. We freely expended our lives as the pain beat us back. Those that died were immediately replaced by more dreamers drawn into the struggle from far away. And, even though we are numberless, the enemy stands alone. Even so, we were pushed back. Laughter last out, and then the Stealer of Souls paused briefly. Is something the matter, worms? it said. Why do you cry out so? The pause was enough. Dreamers rallied. We would not be denied the sleeper who was our ward, whose destiny was ours to secure and protect. The stealer of souls might have the power to inflict pain, but ours is the power to endure. The enemy had made a mistake. Now our net was growing stronger and the enemy is weaker. Dreamers concentrated harder, forced the singing to make the net even sharper, and then the stone-hard binding of the enemy cracked. Abruptly, the pain stopped, as did the laughter. The binding faded away, and the sleeper lay in peace as it should have from the beginning. Singers bent to their task, and those that gnaw waited in patience to satiate their hunger. 
There is no room for the stealer of souls here. We will not permit it. We are guardians of the sleepers, and their care is our sacred trust. Sweet dreams.